good Tuesday, everyone. Uh, just a second. I'm Rahim Eskali, and this is the 324th episode of 413 Sports Talk. Uh, Tuesday, April 19th, 2022, to be exact. Um, for those of you who reside in the great state of Massachusetts, I hope you enjoyed your Patriots Day yesterday. Uh, the Red Sox at Fenway for that 1 o'clock home game. Uh, or the 124th running of the Boston Marathon, the iconic Boston Marathon. Uh, usually these days are a bit warmer. Uh, yesterday we all felt the chill for real bullshit. Uh, but you know who didn't? Steph Curry and Jordan Poole. Splash. Uh, they went a combined 10 for 20 from beyond the arc last night. Uh, the Joker gets taunted by Draymond Green as he receives his second tech. Golden State wins 126-106 uh, against Denver. Episode 324 starts now. And it starts with some news out of L.A. The Dodgers' Freddie Freeman reunites with former team in defending world champions Atlanta Braves, then smashes a first hit against his former team, a home run for first at bat. Pretty, pretty awesome, pretty awesome right there. Uh, for the night, he went with the one for three, two walks, uh, and two runs scored. You know, he hit another uh, solo shot. Um... Joel Embiid had 31 points, 11 rebounds, 12 for 14 from the free throw as the 76ers win game two uh, versus Toronto, win 12 to 97. Um, more basketball stuff. Jalen Brunson of the Dallas Mavericks is 41 points. Uh, were enough for Dallas to win and even the series at a game apiece. And finally, the Long Meadow Lancers boys and girls tennis teams get the win on the road versus Shrewsbury. So special shout out to the boy and girl Lancers. Episode 324 begins now. I think I might have already said that though. But let's talk about NBA. Um... Philly 112, Toronto 97, Joel Embiid 31 points, 11 rebounds, he went ham. Sixers are most likely going to need the Brooms for this one. Uh, Dallas over Utah 110-104, Jalen Brunson's coming out party, 41 points. And finally, Golden State wins over the Denver Nuggets 126-106. I am completely upset with the motherfucking Nuggets. They are not who I thought they were at the beginning of the season. Now, uh, this is a game, this is a series that they should have made competitive. They're also about to get swept. Um, and anyway, that's it for the NBA, MLB. Uh, Minnesota be- be- beats my Boston Red Sox 8-3. Milwaukee for Pittsburgh 6-1. Cubs for, uh, like, t- uh, Rays 2. Sorry, Tampa Bay. Just confusing the hockey and bas- baseball team. Uh, Houston 8, Angels 3. Uh, Colorado 4, Philly 1. Oakland 5, Baltimore 1. Uh, San Diego 4, Cincinnati Reds 1. Uh, Dodgers 7, Atlanta 4, um, Arizona, Washington was postponed, and so was the San Francisco Giants and New York Mets game. would assume that would be due to inclement weather. Anyway, that's all for the MLB. And now NHL, Calgary over Chicago 5-2, Washington over Colorado 3-2, uh, Carolina over Arizona 5-3, New Jersey over Vegas Knights 3-2, Seattle over Ottawa 4-2, and Vancouver over Dallas 6-2. Moving on to NCAA softball, shall we? Uh, The lone game, Tennessee over Texas A&M 5-1. On to NCAA baseball now. Kansas State over Wichita State 12-1. Arizona beats Creighton 6-0. Baylor over Lamar 5-1. Gonzaga over Oregon State 13-6. And Texas Tech in New Mexico was canceled. Inclement weather out there. Um, now we're moving on to Western Mass Sports. We're going to start with boys tennis today, guys. Uh, Longman over Shrewsbury 3-2, as I talked about in the beginning. Uh, Lee beats Monavert 4-1. Belcher Town um, and East Long Meadow beat their respective teams, Ludlow and Minichog, 5-0. Uh, moving on to baseball now. Um, Minichog over Northampton, 8-1. Monument Mountain over Mount Everett, 7-5. In Battle of the Mountains. <laughs> West Springfield over East Long Meadow, 3-2. Uh, Taconic over Holyoke, 10 zip. Uh, McCann Tech over Smith Academy, 6 5. East Hampton over Amherst, 9 0. Southwick over Belcher Town, 7 6. Mount Greylock over Jury, 9 zip. And uh, Hampshire over St. Mary's, 10 0. On to volleyball. Um, Ludlow over Jimmy Cobb, 3 1. And Minichog over Wachusett, 3 2. Lacrosse now, the lone game was St. John's over Minichog, 13 to 12. On to the girls' side of things, Western Mass Sports. We'll start with tennis. Long medal over Shrewsbury, 2 to 2. We talked about that in the beginning. Mohawk Trail over St. Mary's, 4 to 1. Lee over Mount Everett, 4 to 1. 
Belchertown over Holyoke 5 0, and Mount Greylock over Lennox by a score of 3 to 2. And that's it for Western Mass and your professional sports. Now on to Raz Top Tight Ends. I have a little preface for you guys before we start this list. <coughs> hey guys, another position for my yearly player valves. Today we have the tight ends. What's different from last year? I've slightly improved at least evaluating tight ends um, in respects that different tight ends do different things, better, some better than others. Um, over the years, there's been a recent influx of guys who play at a very high level. Uh, the Darren Wallers, the Travis Kelseys, um, you know, the George, the George, ouch, it hurts, I can't play, Kittle, um, from the San Francisco 49ers, you get what I mean. Many different types of guys and how they play the position. Um, in my best attempts of how I think it would correlate from the NCAA to the NFL, uh, this is a really fun group, um, and I hope you like it. Fifth. Teen coaches coming from the Shanahan tree, uh, running that type of offense. Um, a lot of play action, um, different tight ends who are on the field uh, at the same time. Um, oh, excuse me. Oh, I'll track a little bit right there. So yeah, those type of tight ends anyway that are in the Shanahan system that, that are asked to receive and be good receivers are the wide tight ends. Uh, or the wide tight ends. They're the receiving tight ends. The wide tight ends are the ones that come in extra linemen. Maybe their hands aren't that good. I'm sorry. Screw that up a little bit. Anyway, let's start with number 10. And his name is Isaiah Likely. 6'4", 240 pounds out of Coastal Carolina. He's a senior. Now, if you remember, Coastal Carolina was ranked this year at the top 25. So, they made national attention. Um, a really good player, but he's honestly the odd man out here. Um... As I forgot to say, this is a group of 10. This is such a deep class. So much talent at the tight end position. This gets into the 30s. Um, Isaiah Likely is the only guy who I don't think can start in the NFL. The rest of these guys can start in any team. Um, with that being said, let's continue. He's a really good player, but he's the odd man out. Uh, stock fell from second round and didn't stand out to me in the senior bowl. On top of that, he had an underwhelming 40-yard dash. Um, that was 4-8. That mm, sucks. Um, but he has decent hands and natural ability as a receiver, uh, so that will serve him well. Uh, he plays faster than his 40-yard time. Um, some of his tape. Um, I haven't really been able to put my finger on it, but you know, if he gets to the next level, I'm sure we'll find out. Um, he needs development, uh, but he can tri contribute on day one. Excuse me, it's the third tight end. Um, this guy is kind of creative after the catch, in my opinion. Uh, as far as you know, using his arms, um, I got a nice little old tool about there. As far as jukes are concerned, um, he'll hit him hard on blocks. That third tight end that really gets up and gets a, that get, catches a pass. Um, you can find him in uh, the fourth round as a blocking tight end. Number nine, Jeremy Ruckert out of Ohio State Senior. Shout out to my boy Jonathan Matlock, who's an Ohio State fan who I hope is really watching this episode. I'm going to let you know I shouted you out too because here goes your team. Jeremy Ruckert, he's 6'5", 250 from Ohio State. He's a senior. He's a tight end. This guy's a wide tight end, but um, you think it... He's, he's going... I would think that he would receive... He would get such a huge role as far as being a receiver. I mean, he's got the size. Um, though he was horribly underutilized. Um, the little tape there is on him just shows shows him juking dudes, um, making, making catches with his hands as opposed to his body. Um, I'm going up there and really going for those. Um... So, it's not much I could say about him, probably, if he pans out like I think he's going to in the NFL. He would have been higher on this list if he played collegiately a little more. Um, but, you know, uh, Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson are two first-rounders this year. 
So, you know, he, and he had to climb up a depth chart of fairly decent tight ends as well. Um, kind of reminds me of a guy like Austin Hooper. Uh, um, Drew Sample. Drew Sample is another, another good example. <laughs> uh, an overachiever, oft injured um, Hunter Henry at best. Um, definitely has a sought after upside that I think is going to help him find his niche in this league. Um, and the fact is that he's inexperienced as a wide as a, as a receiver. Um, I think that gets better with time. We could be looking at a potential star getting drafted in the third, fourth round. Uh, number eight, Daniel Bellinger, Bellinger, six five, two fifty three, out of San Diego State. Oh, 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 the Aztecs, baby. They they made their mark this year. Uh, another guy who was horribly underutilized. Um, had a three tight end rotation in college. This guy was clearly better than everybody. At least who I saw from a receiving option from the Aztecs this year. Uh, he's a former wide receiver, so you know his route running's on um, point. Um, I feel bad for his college career, honestly, or lack thereof, because this guy's got everything. Uh, very strong. Uh, will definitely be a number two guy right away. Um, and like most tight ends who didn't produce in college, I think he's the one that's going to have a very good uh, professional career. Late bloomers. Um, opportunity, stuff like that. A little development, and um, he could be a good starter with uh, great speed. Number seven. Uh, if you know, if you know football players, you know I'm gonna go with Greg Deluch, Delchich, the Greg Delchich. Sorry, six four two forty three out of UCLA. I know there's a whole bunch of holes. I know you see it already. Um, is he a number two? Is he a number one? I I can't really call it with him. Um, and that's not a bad thing all the time. Um. In my opinion, his upside suits him more as a blocking tight end, uh, but he can surprise you as a receiver. He's got deceptive hands. Uh, very undersized and minimal play strength. Uh, we need to question his blocking ability long term. Um, hands are inconsistent, but uh, one of the better route runners I think that uh, I've seen, you know, at least that I have on this list. Uh, Y'all might be mad at me for number six, but. Anyway, uh, what can I say? That, um, he has, like I said, good route running ability. Um, he was often schemed to be the vertical guy, uh, but it didn't really work out, which is probably why he's only number seven. But so some upside there, but a lot of uh, a lot of coaching, a lot of certain situations have to go right in order for this to work. I'll be quick with this next one because I'm going to get slayed. Uh, number six is Cade Otten out of Washington. He's a junior, six foot five, two hundred forty-seven pounds. <laughs> he was redshirted twice, which means that that development track is there. He's coachable. Um, he's a really good football player uh, who can come out and do the dirty work uh, for you if called upon. Blocking edge rushers, incoming linebackers with formidable force. Uh, very smooth game, um, both blocking and receiving. Not one that he's better at. Um, hasn't played much football, honestly. Uh, COVID and injuries in 2021. Hasn't really been able to get up. Um, COVID, yeah, 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 COVID in 2020. Injuries in 2021. Hasn't really been able to get healthy um, and up his draft stock or have attempts up his draft, his draft stock, excuse me. But uh, his traits, potentials, and intangibles for the position are off the charts. Uh, he's more than a capable blocker. Um, at times can be inconsistent. Um, but that's a skill that only gets better. Even worse with wear and tear. Uh, he's a poor man's Jason Witten uh, long-term projection. I think he's a wide tight end, though, even though he's got some hands. Um, third or fourth round of the draft. He'll make, he'll make his way as a starter at some point. Number five, forgive me for, for destroying your name. Uh, Shigazim Okonkwo <laughs> from Maryland. He's a senior, 6'2", 243. I know. 
Dude, I know the size, I know the size, I know the size, but listen. This is somebody I saw when I was supposed to be paying attention to their defense. Interesting player here. Uh, many might not agree with being on this list. Hear me out. I do because he is so interchangeable. A little small for a tight end. Perfect for a fullback. He's an excellent, excellent blocker that plays through the fucking pads. He's someone who absolutely is going to give it all up on every single play. Uh, the, I think, um, is very good, almost great receiver-like speed. Um, he's going to help him create mismatches within the opposing linebacker's core as well. Um, soft hands goes with that. Uh, ability to create mismatches, which means he could probably be a good receiver out of the backfield. Um, he has all the tools to develop into a receiving tight end. Um, but I think with him being undersized, he's going to just be a blocker, a wide tight end. Um, he will be found in the third or fourth round with his size, the size-speed ratios out of this world. Number four, Jake Ferguson out of Wisconsin. He's a senior at six foot five, two hundred forty five pounds. After all his tape, I could think of is the Cowboys Dalton Schultz. Pulled up their info, honestly, and it's insane how close my comp was. Do it yourself. Dalton Schultz and Jake Ferguson. Um the they play kind of the same too, honestly. Uh, they are what they are, but you can lean into the and ride the waves of success. Um and that's me saying that he's not consistent. Um, I'm definitely not a consistent receiver. Um, you can ride those waves into the end zone, all the streaks. You know what I mean? Um, reminds me of the Seahawks tight end. I forgot his name. He had long hair. Mm, uh, it wasn't that good, but it was good enough where the fans knew who he was. Uh, kind of reminds me of him. Uh, i got to look up that guy, man. Um... Very nifty after the catch. I like his jukes, his feet. Uh, interesting to see the angles, though. He takes on pursuing linebackers at the next level. As the Big Ten, I <laughs> don't have much to speak of as far as linebackers are concerned. Um, number three, Jelani Woods, my favorite tight end of this class. Six foot seven, two hundred fifty nine pounds, out of Virginia, the redshirt senior. That, that's a tight end right there. Six fucking foot seven. Uh. He's a big guy, um, believe it or not. Uh, um, he could could be great at some point. Um, there's not another there's not another um, tight end like him in this class, honestly. So here we go. Uh, the story on this kid: supposedly the most athletic tight end ever, ever to play football. Supposedly, he grades out to be the best tight end to ever play football. Literally. Um, he runs a 4-6-40. A 4-6-40. At 6 foot 7. Almost 260, 260 pounds. Uh, straight line speed, though. Um, the footwork need, the, 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 the jukes, elusiveness, definitely is not there. But, um, straight line speed, uh, but he does have exactly, you know, with, with the weight that that brings forth acceleration issues. It hurts him um, on reach blocks um, in certain plays like the smash when the fourth blocker on the inside guy has to pull. Um, reminds me a lot of Martellus fucking Bennett, who's played for my Packers. Played for the Cowboys, too. Um, slower, though. Clunky. Less athletic um, than, let's say, Jermichael Finley, which is who... Jelani Woods grades out to be long term. Uh, he's going to be a star one day, though, if he works at it. Um, he'll be found in the third round. Number two, the most polarizing guy on this list, Charlie Kohler, uh, six foot six, two hundred fifty-two pounds, a senior out of Iowa State. So watch him block for that boy, Bruce Hall, of, of Iowa State as well. It's my top running back in my picks, in my uh, list anyway. Uh, so anyway, he's going to be a problem for linebackers in safeties that have the assignment of covering this man. He's huge. Uh, he makes a contested catch a thing of ease. Um, he's a great blocker. Um, that will get better. Uh, decent speed, exceptional acceleration, um, great body control. Um, 
the only concern for me is the competition they face in college, and does that translate to what's going on in the NFL? Which leaves my number one tight end to be Trey McBride out of Colorado State. He's a senior. Uh, six foot four, two hundred forty-six pounds. I said something about some Colorado State guy yesterday. Um, I don't know. The correlation is anyway. Number one, Trey McBride, receiver like speed is a plus. Um, a plus grades all up and down the board for him. Uh, great in traffic, boxes out guys to get the, uh, to get the catch, but can also use the speed to beat them as well. You'll often see uh, corners on him, believe it or not, if he's in the slot. Uh, Rinda Grill is a blocker, but other than that, he will be a star for years to come. And that is my top 10 list of tight ends. And this concludes episode 324 as well uh, for Three Sports Talk. Rahim Mescalai, uh, 49 subscribers on YouTube. Come see us over there. And you already know you got to come see us on Facebook because we're the best sports show in Western Mass. Love you all. Wishing a bit out of success. Peace.